Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the session. Happy Friday. Whoever said in the chat, yes, happy Friday. <laughs> um, I'm Grace. I'm one of the Bonner Foundation interns. I'm just here to help facilitate this meeting. So if you need anything, you get kicked out, you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, really excited to meet all of you. And I'm super excited to hear from our speakers today. Um, we have Carson and Zari. Did either of you have a preference on who wants to go first? You guys can figure that out and just go ahead. Um, I, don't, I can go first. Um, it's, okay. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Zari. I am a alumna of Selma College. I just graduated with the class of 2020. I was a computer science major. And my, um, my capstone was basically to build a Bono web page. And so I'll show what the web page looks like. Um, but to sort of give background as to how that sort of became my capstone. Um, this, I guess my senior year, time has been crazy, but this past year, like as far as the beginning of the year, um, I was still sort of trying to figure out what my capstone was going to be. And I was meeting with the director of the Bonner program at Spelman. Um, and she was basically asking me to help come up with a way to, and I was a computer science major, to help come up with a way to make more streamlined to more, to streamline the communication between the Bonner office and the Bonner scholars. Previously, we were doing like group me and email, and I'm in a ton of group me. I don't know if other people at other schools use group me, but I'm in a ton of group me, a ton of group chats. And it's very and even a lot of group me and group chats for even just the Bonner program. And so it's very easy for stuff to get lost in translation or to see something and then forget about the assignment, and then it be canned in late. Same with emails, when like all of your emails are connected together, you get a bunch of emails from professors, emails from the school, emails from the Bonner program. It's just very easy for stuff to get missing or for assignments to like pass through, not anything intentionally, but just in the nature of school and stuff. And so she wanted to, wanted me to help come up with a way to sort of streamline that communication. And so, she didn't really know what that looked like. Um, she like when we were talking about it, it seemed like it would be something like a Moodle, um, but we knew that Moodle, especially trying to build that from scratch, that wouldn't be something that we could do immediately. Um, and so then we started to do research about what it actually looks like to have what we need. Um, as far as being able to have a place where everybody, where all of the Bonner scholars could go to get the information that they need um, as far as like documents and stuff, to have a place to submit assignments um, and even like get notifications. We're still working on the notification part, but as far as having a centralized area to um, get that information, we were sort of able to build that using Wix and Google Drive. So the junior intern last year, she started using Google Drive to help organize all of the Bonner documents. And so we already had that in place. And then when we were doing research as far as trying to find a platform to be able to build the website, um, we came across Wix, did more research about Wix. At first, we found that Wix had a file management system that we could implement. And so that was sort of the first iteration. And then more research, we found that we could connect the site to Google Drive. And so now we have a site that's connected between Wix and Google Drive where we can surface all of the documents that we have in this previously created Google Drive onto the website and it's something that sort of is dedicated to them. And so I'll share my screen to sort of show what our Wix site looks like. So this is the home page of our Wix site. Very simple, Spelman Bonner Scholars. And then this is a picture from one of our service trips to the Furniture Bank in Atlanta. Um, and so at the bottom is just sort of this calendar here. Um, I wanted to add something to the page. And so I figured having a place where people could sort of see the see when stuff is due at the front page was sort of a good idea. Um, right now it's updates because we're out of school for the semester. And then I decided to separate the site uh, by classification because each class sort of has different assignments that they need to do. Um, so we have first year bars. The template that I chose has this cute, has cute little caption things on it. Um, and so I wanted to keep with that and we just sort of changed the pictures and the font and stuff. 
Um, the great thing about Wix is that it's very customizable. Um, so, if so, originally these pictures weren't in here. I could change the pictures, change the colors, that sort of thing. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And so, as far as surfacing Google Drive, um, this is sort of a test document within our Google our Google Drive. And so, you can see that um, the items that are in the Google Drive folder that you link to the site. Um, are surfaced on the page and then people can interact with them, look through folders and stuff like that and fill the assignments straight from here. Um, and so finding out that we could integrate with Google Drive made it a lot more convenient to build the platform and connect everything. So the other pages are pretty similar as far as we have sophomores, um, juniors, um, seniors, because a lot of stuff is just built to the class. And so as you can see, we have stuff where it's like Bonner class, it's only 21. But the great thing about Wix and Google Drive is that it's very simple to change folders in the future. So as people graduate or classes phase up each year, there's no, not a, too tedious to go through and um, reconnect, change the connection. Um, so same with seniors. And then we wanted to have a place to list all of the service sites by what area the service site focused in. And so I also included the PowerPoint for the service site placement based off of all of 2019 so that people, if they see a site that they just know the name, then they can look through the document and see how to get in contact with the site, what the volunteer opportunities are and what the mission of the site is. And so being able to add in PDFs and make them clickable and able to open up with something else that was very convenient. And then we have a shared documents part of the site, which sort of surfaces another part of the Google Drive link because we knew, I knew it was important that for a lot of stuff like non-CLA or CLA forms, advanced schedules, general information, um, before we used to have to, if you, needed that stuff you either have to search way back through your email history or you would have to ask somebody to see if they had it or you have to get in contact with the bonner office um and so this is just makes that whole process a lot easier knowing that there's a single area single directory with all of these documents now people don't have to try to do a lot of search and um, trial and error or even going to the bonner office to um get the information that they need and we also have this sort of contact page. This isn't really connected to anything, but this is like some other thing, some another option that Wix has. Um, and so this is pretty much what the site is. Um, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Of course, this is sort of a second or third iteration in um, the two Bonner scholars that were a year younger than me that I was working with. They're going to continue it with their styles as far as trying to turn it into something that's more accessible on mobile. So then we could surface like notifications and stuff. But this is where our start is. Thank you, Angela. Um, so, yeah, um, are there any questions? I have a question. Um, I've not ever used Wix before for a website, but I like this idea. We also have Google Drive and we have a, a folder for um, all of our bonners with all the documents and stuff, but Google Drive and the docs can get pretty messy really quickly. Um, so do you, one question, do, you, do the students like this format better? Is it easier for them to navigate? And if, um, is there a, function on the Wix that if students had a question that it would kind of like be a, oh, I don't know, like a message board or something like that, that like if class chairs could chime in, if a student could get, couldn't get a hold of me right away and, and it could be like some peer education. Um, so for, we sort of, I haven't done any research really sort of outside of Google Docs. I know that in my first iteration and trying to build the site before I found out about the Wix connection, I saw that Wix had like a file management thing. And so I think it's still on the site. So I can reshare my screen to sort of show what it was like. Um, 
but they have where people can sort of log in and create accounts and stuff. Um, and then you can sort of see the members and people could upload files to the state. I don't actually remember my login was for this, so I'll close <laughs> that. But they have um, a file sort of management thing right here where people could upload files. And I think that with this, people could do like a message board sort of option. But Wix has a lot of built-in functionality a lot, or a lot of stuff that can be added and embedded into the site. And so I really only know about this one because this is what I play with, but I'm sure that there would be a way to do a message board or even if somebody um, wanted, like if they're like with the contact us, if somebody, because that sort of is already a part of pretty much every template, if there was some like, I don't know, if there was like a bot or intern who was like responsible for answer, answering questions or if that was some part of somebody's sort of description then like people's questions could be sent to a general email and so people could sort of answer those as they come up. But I would think that they would have some way to insert a message board. I just haven't used that before or to really say how that works. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, was, I was just going to ask about um, from a capstone perspective, what do you feel that you learned in the process of creating this database that's definitely going to benefit um, our program at Spelman? Um, well, sort of, it's mostly was about learning about handling trial and error because I sort of knew about Wix um, and stuff like that, but sort of thinking outside the box to how to sort of solve problems because my sort of first instinct as like a computer science major is sort of like, how can I build this myself? Um, whereas this was sort of like, we needed something as immediate as possible. Oh, and I think your the person's previous question was how we, how other scholars, how other scholars used it. We haven't really used it in practice yet. We sort of just finished it and then like the semester got started. So I can't say how people have felt about it yet. Um, but I think the biggest impact for me for the capstone was just sort of figuring out creative ways to solve problems as far as how did that you could integrate Google Drive into a website design platform. I was just thinking like, oh, if I try to build this from scratch, I know for sure that this is going to take more than a few months. Um, and so sort of like thinking outside the box and trying to figure out ways to bridge gaps between what um, Ms. B, um, who's our buyer director, was asking for as, as somebody with limited like technical background and me as somebody with that's like what I do. Um, how to sort of bridge that gap and get the, reach a place where even if everything isn't what we, what the ultimate goal is, we have like a minimal viable product that works for the overall team. So I think it's just mostly learning how to think outside the box and approach problems in a way that I hadn't approached it before um, and trying to do research and find tools or and find ways to manipulate tools to be what we need them to be. Thank you. I also had a question about um, your system and everything. So um, I know a lot of the times um, with my bonnet program, maybe we can start something, but like maintenance can be hard. How often would you say that you do some maintenance or updates within your system? Like how often? Um, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, there was background noise um, in my house, so I couldn't catch your full question. <laughs> it's no problem. Thanks for asking me to repeat. But um, it's basically, I was asking, how often do you do maintenance? Like a lot of um, things that we might start, like you start off and it comes off nice and then you have all the dates and things like that. But how often do you have maintenance or how often do you like check? Because yours looks very updated because it's all the way to the point where obviously we don't have any school, but it's, it makes sure to say you don't have anything right now. So I'd really appreciate like understanding like how often to maintenance. Um, I think it will sort of depend on your site and stuff. So when we were building the site, I'm sorry about the background noise. 
um, when we were building the site, um, um, we had a lot of like iterations as far as what we needed in the site. And so that just comes with, that just comes with in building anything new is that like you'll start something and then you'll sort of be playing around with stuff and you'll show a minimal product and then you'll take it back to the team or whoever you're working with and people make the su suggestions for like personalization. So when I started, I was mostly going based off of a template with pre-built backgrounds. I didn't really have pictures or different colors. Um, I just sort of had the content that I wanted to surface. And so then I went back to the Bonner office. We showed it to the director and she said, oh, is there a way we can add more personalization? We, I worked with the other two girls who were helping build it and we changed stuff. And then it's sort of an iterative process. I don't think for this that there will be much more like hard maintenance as far as trying to build stuff again. I think it will mostly be updating stuff on a year by year basis. So like as Bonners graduate, as new Bonners start, and as people move up to into classes, like you'll have to change the folder directions on the Google Drive, um, that sort of stuff. But I don't think it'll be anything that's super unless it's like trying to surface a new feature as far as like oh maybe we want to have people get email updates automatically when assignments are due that sort of stuff um but because wix is such a already built platform as far as templating and it's well established it doesn't take much maintenance on this end okay thank you so much and i had a follow-up question of who do you give the responsibility like the responsibility of like adding in dates or updating like who is the main person of that is it your site leaders or is it just you um i think it sort of depends on your bonner organization structure so i think for some stuff it would be like our junior or senior intern whoever is sort of responsible for organization in bonner as it is as it stands now um, and then the thing about the site is like you can transfer ownership to different places. And so I'll eventually transfer the ownership of the site to the um, junior intern. And so whoever is over that would be responsible for updating. Um, and so I wouldn't, because I'm graduating, I don't think it wouldn't really be me who would be keeping up with updates and stuff. It would sort of be whoever's like, the intern and we could have trainings that sort of get passed down. Um, so yeah. Okay, I have a thanks. question. I'm sorry, Ricky, go ahead. Get your follow up. Oh, I was just saying thank you. <laughs> so I have a question regarding that. So you already built it. Were you able to, because I know like COVID happened, spring semester and people had to leave. Were you able to train someone to like just take over like the basic things until like maybe another computer science student come along? Because mm -hmm. oh yeah, I was. Um, we I sort of so the G current junior intern who's now the senior intern. I sent her like walked her through the site, and then I sent her sort of screen recordings of how to change like the Google Drive folders, that sort of stuff. Um, and she was also sort of familiar with Wix. And so we do have like those screen recordings and email and stuff. But in general, like Wix is very user friendly. Um, and so even even like with like it doesn't it doesn't take a lot to sort of transfer because it's meant for people who ha don't really have any experience, technical experience. They just sort of want to build a site really quick. Wix is perfect for that background which is another reason why it was a great choice for this because if i was to build something from scratch then i was sort of that takes a lot more trying to teach somebody how to maintain that versus something like wix where it's very already it's already meant for people who don't have a strong technical background any other questions Oh, she asks um, in the comments, would we feel comfortable sharing that document so that students can, which document specifically? Um, yeah, our documents are in within the Google Drive itself and then they're surfaced on the Wix site. Um, 
if I have time, I could sort of show like in the background how, how that works. Um, like I could do a screen share really quick and show how we sort of pull stuff into like Surface Google Drive files into the Wix site. Um, I think that doesn't take too long, but everything that I pretty much showed on this site uh, was was like stuff that's in within a Google Drive. Um, and so I'll just do the site that we did yesterday for the demo. Um, Sorry. So. Um, so just to clarify for me, sorry, I'll try to turn this way. Sorry. Okay. Um, if y'all are comfortable either like downloading or sharing a viewable link to the um, site placement document that y'all had, um, a lot of members of our program have asked us to create a document like that, which we typically do for first year exploration, but- Oh, the site um, placement document, like the PDF yeah. file? Yep. Okay, yeah, I can send that. Um, do you want to drop your email? Okay, so then I won't need to show this. Um, is there an email or something I should send it to, or should I just send it to um, Bonner and have them sort of surface that somewhere? Um, yeah, whichever works better for you. If you also wanted to like share it and get the link, you could drop it in the chat, but any of those work for you. Okay, I could, yeah, I can. That might actually work. I might be able to share. Um, yeah. You can also drop in the link so that we can be able to post it within the learning community right on your caption and stuff. So anyone else that um, may be thinking the same as Amber would be able to access that file too. Okay, I'll try to, I just opened the PDF link. I'm not sure, can somebody click in and see if that opens up to the actual PDF? Yeah, I did. That's it great. Did. Okay. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. No problem. Um, any other questions? Okay, if no more questions, then that's my presentation. Awesome job, Zari. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for having me. Awesome. If you guys think of more questions for her, you can go ahead and put them in the chat as well, and we'll have time at the end to answer them. And after that, we are going to move on to Carson's Capstone project. Yes, yeah, so my name is Carson, and it was great to hear from Zari about the website. It looks awesome. Um, this actually um, wasn't my capstone project that I'm presenting on. It's um, kind of a little bit of an overhaul of our junior capstone process in general at Stetson. So, um, so can you guys see my PowerPoint? Is it small? Um, so basically, yes, I am a rising senior at Stetson University um, down in Florida. And um, we have a rather large Bonner program between like 60 and 70 Bonners every year. Um, and our capstone project is generally completed in the junior year. So we call it the um, junior capstone project. Um, uh, so I'll be referring to it as that, the JCAP. JCAP is what we call it. Um, and we're kind of constantly evaluating and working to improve the process. Um, some of the recent changes um, that I've been working on along with my um, supervisors were an effort to really kind of like standardize um, the capstone process for, for students across the board. Um, so I worked on this project as part of my role um, in our leadership team as the junior class-based leader for this past school year. Um, so yes, as I mentioned, it was a highly collaborative process with um, my wonderful Bonner director, Kevin, and also Amber, who's actually on this call. So yay. <laughs> um, and also uh, collaborated with both the outgoing and ingoing, um, incoming sets of senior interns. So this is kind of a background on the projection, um, an overall layout. And um, I'm gonna go through the whole thing. So, um, and then kind of backtrack to some of the more specific documents that I've been creating. So feel free to stop me if you have any um, specific questions. So um, sophomore year in the fall semester, we have a sweet spot workshop and write up. 
and then in the spring semester, a needs assessment, in the junior year, fall semester, a project proposal, and then the spring semester is the time for project implementation, uh, project assessment, and the junior capstone presentations. And then in the senior year, in the fall semester, there's a JCAP project report, and then in the spring semester, the senior presentation of learning. Um, so each component has um, a specific due date, um, usually before a little bit before the end of the semester. So students really have kind of the whole semester to focus and um, have time and energy to complete the component. Um, so one major thing that um, we worked on this year was kind of extending the project through more than one year, as I called it the junior capstone project before a lot of these components, um, like the needs assessment, the project proposal, um, the needs assessment was occurring in the junior year. So all of those things were kind of um, kind of crammed together a little bit. Um, so we really hope this kind of extension gives students time to work and create a, a great product and also allow for kind of the in, in, inevitable hiccups and sort of things that happen when we're working on a, a community project of this magnitude and also so that it's up to the, the standards that we would like um, our community projects to be. So, um, the things that I added specifically and were the um, sweet spot write up. So the sweet spot, sweet spot workshop um, was kind of new this past year, something we were kind of requiring um, for students. And basically that is a, a meeting um, with their, um, the, the Bonner coordinator and their site supervisor and also an academic advisor. And then also the um, project report was the other major thing that, um, I worked on. Okay, yeah. So, um, so these new components, the Sweet Spot Workshop Write-Up is a one-page um, detailed write-up of the Sweet Spot Workshop, and it's supposed to be giving uh, specifics of the participants, the conversation, and the outcomes. And so, kind of the goal in this was to ensure all students complete a successful meeting and have uh, a record of the process as they're going through it. Um, And sorry. Um, and so then also this final report. So um, is also a, another formalized document recording kind of the outcome of the JCAP. It has three sections: project overview, project evaluation, and acknowledgement acknowledgments. And the goal of this is to have um, professional documentation um, of the project and assessment. Um, both these documents are, you know, one pager, so nothing crazy, but kind of just really making sure students have a synthesis of their project. Um, and just if you are at all unfamiliar with um, kind of the other aspects that I mentioned, so the needs assessment is something that we've been requiring students to do um, for a couple years. So it's a less than 800 words, and it's um, basically an introductory paper introducing the student's community partner in their current needs. Um, one thing we're also doing in our program is trying to move towards uh, data-driven needs assessments. Um, and then the project proposal is um, also an 800-word document synthesizing the needs assessment and adding details about what specific project uh, will be occurring and hopefully a timeline. Um, and then the presentation, which I also mentioned, it was just something um, that we did virtually this year, yay! Um, but where students give a five minute presentation to the community members on their project and progress so far. Um, so basically we wanted these two documents and I, I really think that they kind of round out the, um, the JCAP process and kind of, you know, from the Sweet Spot Workshop kind of uh, setting students up to kind of, okay, I'm, I'm formalizing this process a little bit, I'm, recording and um, being professional, things like that. And then with the GCAP report, um, really letting them have um, a, a succinct, you know, demonstration of their, of their project that um, they can, that can be used to things like attached to a resume, sent to a prospective employer, um, kind of something I had been brainstorming about and we've talked about is the idea of a live or living document um, where basically, uh, previous documents referenced in the final report. So like the needs assessment, um, the write-up, the sweet spot write-up or the project proposal, they can all be hyperlinked to if they're published publicly. So then basically one 
small document has the whole story of a student's um, of the whole student's junior capstone project. Um, so that's kind of something I'm really excited to see if uh, that eventually comes into fruition. Um, and we've also thrown around a little bit um, the document being submitted to different like service publications or uh, things like that. Um, so that's something we're we're working towards. Um, and so we created these documents really to um, hope to like formalize and standardize the process and evaluations. Um, so uh, along with the um, documents I previously mentioned, I also um, added to the syllabus that we had. So, so the syllabus clearly states the timeline, deadlines, and expectations. And then I also created a JCAP rubric. Um, so each component, and we have five components, are deemed either advanced, proficient, developing, or incomplete. And then also a JCAP research, resource sheet. Um, which I compiled from previous documents um, that has various re resources um, to help students, including several helpful um, Bonner Foundation resources. Um, so these were something, you know, to really kind of standardize the process and it will hopefully be very useful to future students and leaders, but also helpful, helpful to our institution if we try and get any of our on our classes or, or projects and things um, certified for course credit. That was one thing, um, you know, when I've been on sophomore exchange or, or heard from other Bonners um, that they get course credit for things they do in Bonner, I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> we would love that. Um, so definitely excited about that possibility in the future. Um, so the resource sheet I kind of initially created for our juniors. Um, because this spring semester was so crazy, we weren't able to have our presentations in person. So I created a resource sheet um, to be able to make presentations digitally. And that was kind of the basis um, for that. So um, one also thing, so I know COVID, like the world has turned upside down. It's all been crazy. Um, definitely missing my like in-person Bonner family but I feel like it has allowed us to like d diversify the format of some of our um, things. So we talked about uh, a sweet spot workshop, you know, for a lot of people, it was a struggle to get their advisor, their um, site supervisor all in the same place at the same time on campus at their site. Um, so like the option of a virtual format is really awesome. Now that um, we can say that's an option, there you go. Um, and also the digital presentations uh, just in case for some reason people can't be there in person or extenuating circumstances, but now that's also an, an option. Um, so I really, I worked really hard on this uh, structure and I really hope um, it helps uh, future students and their projects be more successful. So any questions? Um, the documents that I've referenced in my PowerPoint should be attached to the meeting, I believe, on the platform, if you um, would like to take a look at those further. They're on the Bonner Learning Community. Yeah. Unshare. Any questions or comments or feedback? I have a question. Sure, Amber. Um, so Carson, you were a junior student who both facilitated the third year, um, both modules of the uh, Bonner Eight Themes curriculum for the junior year about project proposal um, and facilitated your own capstone at your site alongside that work. And then once we switched to remote learning after March 13th was when you kind of began this inReach project. So if you're able, can you share a little bit about what your experience was like as a facilitator of those eight themes and as somebody who did your capstone within the context of our old system and what some of those missteps or inconsistencies were that we had before that prompted you to think of some of these new ideas? That's a great question, Amber. So kind of a lot of these ideas did stem from my own experiences and um, seeing and, you know, really knowing about the experiences of other people in our class. Um, 
they're just kind of in the in the process that we had it just kind of seemed like there were things that were able to to fall through the cracks um for example i i didn't even have a sweet spot workshop at the end of my uh sophomore year um it just it didn't happen and there wasn't any sort of kind of process or structure for for it to make sure that it happened um and several of my classmates were um in that position as well i know there were several who did have um sweet spot workshops and those were uh really great and so i i want everyone to be able to have one and and make sure that those happen and really get students off on the right track um and then also um speaking from personal experience as someone who had um you know, uh, kind of a, a lot of things on their plate, uh, taking full course load, um, leadership positions, like two jobs on campus. I was sitting in fall semester saying, I want to work on my capstone so much. And I feel like I have no time. I had like a semester to do it. Like, it, it was kind of this whole um, crazy thing. And so I really just wanted to make sure that um, students after me really felt like they had the opportunity to pour as much and had as much time um, to put into it to make these like, incredible community projects that all of us can make. Um, so, yes. Thank you, Amber. And then there was a question in the chats. Um, how do you say your capstone aligns with your major? And if your major requires a thesis capstone, do you have to complete both? Um, so as I was saying, this wasn't actually my capstone. My capstone, I work at, I'm an environmental science major with a biology minor. So my site is an environmental um, center in Florida. So I'm actually working with them on an outreach project for their site and that is my capstone. Um, so, you know, this was really more of, for my love of Bonner and my love of my class. Um, and I, I love color coding, so it was fun to, color code um, the syllabus in the rubric um so my major does require um like a, a a cat or a research project basically but that was something like completely separate um because i was doing science research um but i think that there is a lot of opportunity and it's something i've i've talked about um we've talked about in our program is like kind of getting um Bonner work more involved um, in, in their major and trying to really see that's the whole point of the sweet spot workshop is to really see where those um, those worlds collide and, and make sure it's it's great for everybody so thank you um, so in someone asked about the sweet spot workshop again so the sweet spot workshop is the student um, the Bonner coordinator and um, an academic advisor. So um, some people have a couple. I have like one primary academic advisor. So he's in the environmental science department. Um, that would be my advisor. And then also the, the site supervisor. So um, kind of anyone at your site who you're working pretty closely with. Um, usually there's someone designated as a site supervisor. But like at my site, um, we have like a, a, a site manager and then also a volunteer coordinator. So usually when I do meetings, I invite both of them. Um, so that's just kind of my example. Um, really, so that's kind of getting all of the aspects of the student's um, life in one meeting. So hopefully you can start having a conversation and designing a, a capstone project that, um, you know, fits a bonder needs and also is, is working along with your, your major and, and what you wanna do in life. Um, how does the process and timeline of DCAPS change or look different if a student studies abroad? That is a great question. Um, I'm not really sure besides the fact that, um, you know, some of the, the components it, are pretty flexible. So like the written documents, you wouldn't necessarily need to be there in a semester to write, let's say your project proposal. Um, you know, as long as you're still writing and have submitted, that would be okay. Um, I know specifically at Stetson, we're, there are certain semesters, like we're not allowed to study abroad. So we're not allowed to study abroad our um, senior semester, like the last semester senior year. Um, so we already kind of have those um, constraints on it. Um, but uh, generally it's pretty flexible as long as the, the project and the components get done.
I can just a little bit more from the perspective of Stetson and other schools might have similar models, but we're actually a hybrid school. So we accept both scholars and leaders. And as part of our program, we accept students until they're entering the beginning of their junior year. So most of our students begin at the beginning of their first year, but we do have transfers or current Stetson students that we accept into Bonner who are either starting their sophomore year or starting their junior year. And when it's the case that a student is starting their junior year, they jump right into the capstone, just like Carson was talking about. Um, it makes a little bit of a challenge, but we try to support them through it. Um, and Carson did a really amazing job of helping one of our new juniors this year as well. Um, for us, when a student studies abroad, we just need to make sure that we know that ahead of time. So it's been the case the past two years, we've had students who come into college with an associate's degree, and so they graduate as Bonner Scholars in only two years. So we crunch down our four-year timeline for them. Um, so that might mean that they're doing their sophomore exchange trip, their um, junior capstone presentation, and their senior presentation of learning all in the same semester. Um, but we make sure that, again, they're supported and understand those expectations. And the same is true of study abroad. So for us, especially if they're a Bonner Scholar, they have to make up these requirements. And it's their job to work with us to identify what the right timeline is for them in their site. Hi, so I had another question, um, and this is for both of the speakers. I wanted to know how um, in your capstones, did you have either, did you have or were you basically like the go-to person in your bonding program for people to be able to complete their capstone or what type of support did you get from fellow bonners that really helped you in your capstone process? Um, I can go first. Um, not really, I don't, I wasn't really a go-to um, in my program. Like we, I had, I worked with two other Bonner scholars who were computer science majors. And so we like collaborated amongst ourselves and with um, the director of our program, um, but not really a go-to for other scholars within my class or the other classes. So as the um, junior class-based leader for this past year, I kind of was a, a ground floor go-to for our um, junior students completing in capstones. Um, and so I, as a class-based leader, I, um, as Amber mentioned, I held workshops throughout the year based on, on, on the eight themes. Um, we did one on public speaking. Um, we did some on our, our projects and so, um, about once a month we we met and I led um, kind of workshops meetings uh, for the juniors to um, to help them in their capstone but also I worked very closely with our Bonner director Kevin as as like a team um, for you know at and also Amber as support for the juniors in general um, so Kevin has a lot of great brainstorming students would go to him to kind of talk about their ideas um, so we have um, a large support system. Thank you for that. I was just asking this question because um, at Widener University, um, we have our capstones from your freshman year until your, until your senior year. Mm -hmm. And one of our positions is um, that I would be taking over. It's like the first time we're implementing it is basically being like a capstone helper. So just I was just trying to find either ways to really be there for each grade because they each have different capstones. So I think that was very helpful from both of you, um, what you were able to share with me. Thank you. I don't want to step over anybody, but I have a question, Carson, if you don't mind. What does your Bonner syllabus look like? I'm just wondering how that works. 
So um, it's kind of, uh, I can actually pull it up and, and show you. It's um, pretty similar to like a class syllabus. Um, whereas in like, um, you know, the each component is listed and then a description is given. What are the expectations, the deadlines? Um, let's see if it'll open up. Um, and that um, coordinates like directly with the rubric um, that, you know, it's not really a grade, but, um, you know, kind of what the, the expectations are. Um, so this is what our rubric looks like, um, telling the aim of the capstone, um, the learning outcomes, expectations, and then these are our, um, required components. So we have the sweet spot workshop, and then the write up is is the deliverable. Um, and then so um, like, for example, these say um, the deadline will be determined by the, the class based leader and the, the coordinator director. So that's kind of something individual that gets decided every year based on, you know, what days of the week fall on what day and so on. But we have a, a progression document that I also created. Um, uh, that like gives like more specific kind of details for that. So we have the sweet spot workshop, um, the needs assessment, um, the project proposal, and then the junior capstone presentation, and then the project reflection. Um, so each of those has a, a deliverable and, and a deadline. And then at the bottom here, we have kind of the, the ideal capstone sequence needs assessment evaluation of options, project proposal, project implementation, project assessment. Um, so that's just kind of our, our syllabus. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the syllabus and um, all the other documents I've been talking about should be um, on the, the community learning platform. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, they are. They're under the name of this, sec uh, the title of this. They're under that, and you should be able to see everything, including the presentations. Does anyone have any more questions? Do you, um, to presenters mind putting your email, if you're willing to share in the chat so people can reach out to you just in case they have questions? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we address this in any other ways and I'm not sure how much time we have. So if we don't obviously cut us off, but um, so this was Stetson's uh, technically our first year using the eight themes curriculum as a requirement for all of our class based training leaders. Um, and a lot of our students had different perspectives on the like usefulness and user friendliness of those trainings. So Carson, if you're willing to share, um, can you give some insights or tips that you have for other students about making the capstone trainings as part of the eight themes work for you? Sure. Um, so I looked at all of the um, lesson plans at the beginning of the year when I was kind of charting out um, my meetings and some of them were definitely really helpful and um, awesome resources, but also um, some of them, especially just concerning where the, the project uh, portion was like project planning and stuff um i felt at least like the the juniors in our class um and just like as bonners going through our program kind of had some of those um basic like planning like project planning uh things kind of already down um uh stetson is like small liberal arts so um we do a lot of projects already like in class and for bonner stuff like that so um I felt like my students really didn't need that um, 
kind of over and over again. So we ended up doing a, a couple different things. Um, I said we had a public speaking um, meeting. So we had, um, I partnered with the seniors who give their senior presentation of learning. And we had a public speaking professor from Stetson come in and, um, and talk to us and then uh, practice public speaking games. Um, I thought that was, that was a great addition. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that the eight themes are great and I enjoyed looking at the lesson plans, although I, I didn't find all of them um, quite as useful um, than, than others. I had a, another question, sorry. Um, but just the overall, uh, yeah, this is the overall, sorry, since it was your first year, um, your first year doing a capstone, I wanted to know what was the feedback from juniors? Um, I know like when we first um, were, I guess, changing our capstones and um, adding things, we didn't get as much good feedback at first. So I just want to know, like, how was your school with the feedback, both um, Spelman and Stetson? So at Stetson, definitely um, kind of as I was working through um, fall semester and kind of really feeling um, like from myself and my experiences and also hearing from my peers in the junior class that um, you know, things needed to be changed. We definitely started already kind of brainstorming what could happen then. That's really kind of when we decided um, that these changes need to be made. And what that um, equated to was actually changing some of the deadlines um, for things like the needs assessment and project proposals, like in, in the middle of the semester, like towards the end of it, um, to kind of give that more extended um, timeline that that we ended up creating um, for the students and that that got positive um, feedback and um, I have talked to the next junior class based leader um, at Stetson and I think she's really excited for the changes and um, so I'm excited to, to hear more feedback and see how it goes you know kind of over the next year and then after that um, so hopefully it's more good feedback. <laughs> Um, for Spelman, I think in general, capsules have been given good feedback. We didn't, I don't think we really had any crazy changes for our capsules, but and a lot of people did their capsules on stuff that, that they were passionate about. Um, and that was like matched with what they were doing for school and stuff like that. So I know one of my friends, she had one that was like a Be the Change Symposium that was talking about where she brought in people on campus um, to do workshops and stuff and it engaged the entire, pretty much a large, the larger Spelman community thinking about um, being more intentional with service and stuff like that. And she did that both over her junior and senior year. Our capstone is like junior and senior year. Um, junior year for me, was a lot. I was I was gone basically the whole year, um, and so I had a lot of changes in my capstone, prior even to getting to like what my final two capstones were. Um, but in general, most of my class capstones and stuff that they were passionate about, and that fit that met, matched with like their majors and stuff, and it was pretty positive feedback. We're just about at time, so if anybody has questions, please interrupt me. Um, but I wanted to thank you two so much for presenting and sharing everything. I know we learned a lot for our program because we're always revamping our captions and everything, so it's really great to hear. Um, and I hope somebody, everybody got to take something away from this, so thank you two so much. Thanks for coming, everybody, and listening to us. <laughs> yeah. thank and you join for us for us. the 2020 celebration after, please. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody.